Hello and welcome to the Choose U Calgary podcast, your one-stop shop for learning about U Calgary's admissions, programs, campus life, and everything in between. My name is Max Sterley. I'm the digital recruiter and an advisor here at the university's enrollment services. In this episode, I had a chance to sit down with Caitlin Hornbeck and Ruo Palin about their unique experiences while studying abroad through the U of C. We covered a lot of important topics like how they paid for it, best practices on the road, and where the study abroad office comes in throughout the process from application to being overseas. Hope you enjoy the show. Before we get into the nitty gritty about your experiences, let's just start with who you guys are and what faculties you're in, what your University of Calgary experience has been like, and where did you go when you studied abroad? So my name is Raul Palin. I'm a University of Calgary alumni who graduated in 2016 with an international relations degree and a minor in East Asian studies. Um, I currently work for University of Calgary International uh, to help promote and um, work with our faculties on international exchange opportunities. Uh, I studied if I guess I took part in about four programs in total with the University of Calgary International. Uh, the first being in 2013 to the University of Seoul for the uh, winter program. Uh, I liked it so much that while I was abroad, I actually changed my degree uh, and applied for another uh, semester abroad, so did winter 2014. Uh, wasn't quite ready to come back to Canada, so actually participated in the University of Seoul summer school as well. Uh, and then I ended up just kind of staying in South Korea for an extended period of time, uh, interning with the Canadian Embassy, the Seoul Metropolitan Government, and then in 2015, the University of Seoul asked me to come back to help run their summer program, uh, just because I had been in and out so much. Uh, so uh, those were the three Korean programs. And then my final program, uh, I finished my degree in Washington, D.C., uh, where I participated in the Washington Center uh, Academic Internship Program, uh, and I interned for the OECD while I was out there. Hi, I'm Caitlin Hornbeck. Um, I am going into my third year. I'm a sociology major here at the University of Calgary, and I just got back from the Social Issues and Justice Mexico City uh, group study. So, yeah. So, Caitlin, we'll start with you for the next question here. Um, what was your biggest motivating factor to study abroad? And when when you were considering it, did you have any hesitancy or worries about going? Um, so actually, uh, my friend um, was the person who introduced me to the group study program. She was like, hey, this is a really cool opportunity. I think you would really like it. And uh, typically, I'm a person who has to like have a friend or like know somebody when I'm doing something or going somewhere. And um, I was looking at the, the study abroad uh, website and looking at the course outline and all that sort of stuff. And automatically I was like, yes, I'm going. I don't care if she's going with me. I'm just doing it. Um, it looked like a really good experience. Um, the group study that I went on was a sociology and social work course, um, which are two of my passions. So it was just a really good fit. I think the universe like really wanted me to go. Um, so I went. Um, I think the biggest hesitancy that I had was um, this would be the first time that I was traveling um, without like a family member or um, kind of like solo, but not really solo because I was on a group study. Um, but it was definitely, uh, definitely a little bit difficult for me um, in terms of just like being by myself or like being responsible for myself. Um, but it was a really good experience. As far as, in, you know, any hesitancy that I had uh, studying abroad. So for me, when I went to South Korea the first time in 2013, I didn't know a single thing about the culture, the language, uh, anything at all. My main motivating factor for uh, going abroad was to actually meet uh, friends from high school uh, that had ended up uh, moving back to South Korea to either complete military service or to actually, um, you know, study at a post-secondary institution in South Korea. And so uh, the initial um, point of going was just to have a semester with friends and, you know, get some academic credit along the way. Um, when I had first landed, uh, you know, I had a friend's family pick me up at the airport. And so for me, the transition was quite smooth uh, in that initial uh, semester. But of course, you know, you can't always rely on your friend from high school to hold your hand through uh, the semester uh, and indeed the subsequent three years that I had in South Korea. And so, of course, as with any new experience, there was a bit of a steep 
learning curve. Um, but, uh, you know, your host institution um, and just, you know, your fellow international students, you're all in the same boat. And so uh, definitely any hesitancy that I maybe have had had before going uh, to do with language and stuff like that was quickly, um, you know, knocked away because uh, I had a lot of support, not only with my host institution, but my fellow international students and as well as my University of Calgary advisor. So Raul, you touched on it a little bit about um, heading to South Korea, not really knowing too much about the country. Uh, how much? How much did you know about the country? And could you also just touch on a little bit um, the host school that you went to when, sure. in your initial experience? Sure. Yeah, um, I knew absolutely nothing about uh, <laughs> South Korea, Seoul, the city I was going to. Uh, all I knew is that I had couple of friends that encouraged me to, you know, come to their university and have a semester uh, abroad sort of thing. I didn't so much as look at a Lonely Planet guide or anything, you know. Uh, I remember when I was flying into Seoul, uh, you know those little uh, maps that you get in the screen yeah. in front of you? Um, it doesn't show a bridge that connects the airport to the mainland, and so as we're flying in, I'm like, do I need to book a ferry? Like, is there something, <laughs> is there an extra step to get to Seoul? And so I turn to um, the flight attendant and I'm like, so do I take a ferry? Like, what do I do when I land? Like, where do I go? And she's like, yep. And she walked away. And I was like, <laughs> all right, perfect. So it turned out that there is a bridge and my, you know, my friend's family was there to pick me up. But, uh, you know, uh, that, it, just going in uh, knowing nothing uh, and just being open to the possibilities was uh, a really great way for me to start my program. My host institution, the first impressions that I uh, had of it uh, were all really positive. You know, they had a great um, orientation day uh, where international students uh, were able to sort of get a lay of land, work with uh, faculty representatives and domestic students to sort of become comfortable uh, with life in Korea, uh, but as well as just, you know, the student life in Korea and just uh, what is expected of us and things like that. Um, what was unique about the University of Seoul is that they have something called uh, the Soulmate program, and that's where a domestic Very student, catchy. right? <laughs> yeah, uh, a domestic student is partnered with uh, an international student, and they sort of, you know, help you out in your initial um, uh, settling into life in Korea. But then as well, you know, you quickly become friends. And so uh, with, through that program, I was... Uh, I was very much uh, a part of the campus community right away, um, and it was just overall, uh, in those first few days, they could have been uh, very stressful, but my host institution really uh, helped with that transition. So, How about you, Caitlin? Um, so, going to Mexico, um, I didn't really know much about Mexico City. Um, I'd been to, like, a resort, you know, destination, go to the beach, stay there for a week, like, don't go anywhere off of the resort, like... That sort of stuff. So I didn't really um, know much about Mexico City. Um, I do have a friend who lives um, in Mexico City, and she's actually a U Calgary alumni, um, and she's teaching English at a school there. And so Mexico City was on my radar of like a place that I could maybe go because I had a friend, um, but I didn't really know anything other than that it was a very large city, and you know the typical like oh it's very dangerous. You know it's like one of the most dangerous cities in the world. So before I went, I actually did so much research about Mexico City. I watched every single YouTube video I could. Um, I knew the streets inside and out and backwards. So when I got there, I felt I felt a lot better about it. Um, so the research paid off The you. research paid off so much. I think I knew a little too much, <laughs> um, but I watched, I read every like online thing neighborhoods not to go into Mexico City, neighborhoods to go. Um, I was also like watching reality TV shows. Um, there's this TV show on Netflix. I can't remember the name of it, but it's like follows around these like elite like families in Mexico City. Um, I watched it mostly because it was Spanish with English subtitles. So I could like get a little Spanish language skills in while I was at it. So yeah, I, I think I knew a little bit going in, but obviously like once you land, it's like 
completely different than anything that you have made up in your mind. And then in terms of the host institution, our program was a little bit unique because we did um, actually partner with some social work students at UNAM, which is the autonomous university in Mexico City. Um, it's a very pre prestigious school. Um, the top four, only top four percent of students get in. Um, so it was a really big honor for us to be able to partner with them. Um, we spent a week up in the mountains of Mexico with them, like five hours away from Mexico. Mexico City, which was really awesome, but yeah, so that was a really interesting exper excuse me, experience um, because we were able to kind of like meet with students and see what it was about, but we also were like just a group study, so we had a lot of our University of Calgary support as well. Right, and one thing I wanted to touch back on, mm -hmm. uh, your preparation that you did for you know, looking through the different neighborhoods, watching mm -hmm. Netflix, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. How did that help with your acclimation process in terms of getting settled into Mexico City? I think it helped a lot because I took the advice of the study abroad office and I learned some language skills. I learned some like quick um, tutorials. I did Duolingo as well, which I think really benefited me because I was able to pick up on the language right away, which um, helped me in terms of like when we had time off and we were going to restaurants I was able to communicate with the waiters and all that sort of stuff but I think like acclimating I got a very different sense of Mexico City from like watching the YouTube or watching the Netflix show where it was like the rich people in Mexico City and in Mexico there's a very 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 large divide between the rich and the poor um, and so to see that wealth divide in reality was it was a huge culture shock for me but I think in terms of acclimation because I already sort of knew what the even what the city would look like I think it helped me in terms of just figuring out how to best maneuver and how to best like situate myself within the space that I was taking up okay so let's shift to coursework because obviously you are going away to study and mm -hmm. you know take courses and receive credits and stuff and two very different experiences for you both. So Raul, we'll start with you. What did your coursework look like throughout your study abroad experience? And how much time for other opportunities and experiences did that lend you? Sure, yeah. Um, so as far as the coursework went, um, for international students at the University of Seoul, Seoul specifically, um, we had a number of opportunities to take courses that were offered in the what they would call like the faculty section so normal classes that you'd normally take at any institution or courses that were geared to introducing Korea to international students so Korean politics business culture and so in my first semester uh, I decided that I would take uh, as many courses uh, as I could on introducing myself to Korea. So the history, the politics, business, uh, international relations. And um, what was really interesting is that I actually got to work under, sorry, study under uh, Professor Byung-ha Lee. And he actually was on the National Committee for North and South Korean Reunification. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, a huge window into uh, South Korean international relations. Uh, and it was actually the course that prompted me to switch from being an accounting major to an international relations major. Uh, it was just kind of a light bulb moment. Uh, and so, uh, you know, through my courses at the University of Seoul, I really expanded on uh, my interest for, you know, international affairs um, and political science. And so I was lucky in that the course load that I took uh, and the coursework um, that was uh, being submitted did allow for me to have some external opportunities. So interning with the uh, Canadian Embassy, uh, interning with the Seoul Metropolitan Government, uh, being able to take language courses to satisfy the language requirement of my degree. And so, uh, you know, there were definitely pathways for me to grow academically, but as well as professionally. Um, and just personally, you know, I went when I was 20 um, for the first time and then I came back from South Korea when I was 23 uh, and uh, in those three years you know changed my degree and really hit the ground running in a new uh, academic field and so the coursework definitely uh, had lent that flexibility uh, for me to learn and sort of stumble along the way a little bit uh, but it all benefited me in the end for sure. How about you Caitlin? Um, so our course coursework was um, comparatively light to other UCalgary um, courses that I've taken. 
Um, it, our coursework was a lot more reflective. It was a lot more, you know, how did you feel about this? Um, you know, what was your, how, how did you personally grow? Um, we did do, so it was a social work course and then a sociology course. So our social work course was a lot more personal, reflective, a lot about feelings, a lot about how certain things will impact your practice or um, certain uh, experiences in Mexico compared to Canada in terms of like how social work is done um, and that sort of stuff. And then for our sociology course, we were looking at social issues. So um, we had a lot of really great lectures from uh, professors um, from the university in Mexico. And they talked to us about race issues, gender issues, um, equality, uh, crime and security, that sort of stuff. And then a lot of our coursework was, um, actually it was also pretty reflective. We did like talking circles every night to sort of discuss what we had learned throughout the day. And then we had like a final, final paper that we had to write um, that was just sort of like synthesizing everything. Um, so yeah, I think the coursework was relatively light, but also appropriate to what we were doing because we were doing a lot of Every day we were learning something and so it was nice to just be able to sort of like wrap that up into a neat little package that we could just kind of like say this is exactly what I learned. But in terms of uh, what I got to experience, we had some time off so I was able to sort of do my own thing. I actually also stayed on for a week uh, by myself with my friend and so it was great to sort of already have three and a half weeks of experience in Mexico and then stay on for another week and kind of do my own thing, see maybe what I had missed, although our program was packed with every single thing that you could possibly do. I checked off every single um, item on my list that I had uh, figured out in my YouTube videos, like watching all of the, I did all of the touristy things, I did all of the not touristy things, um, so yeah. Uh, so we'll stick with you, Caitlin, just mm -hmm. on, because obviously when you go study abroad, and I think it's safe to, I, I didn't go study abroad, but I think based on you guys, your responses, that the learning environments were very different for you. Uh, both in Mexico City and in Seoul. So could you touch on that a little bit, like what that looked like in terms of how different was it for you learning in a new environment and what was like a big takeaway from, from that environment? So um, we did a lot of, um, at the start of our trip, we did a lot of museums, a lot of, we had, you know, tour guides take us around and like do sort of an interpretive talk about um, anthropology, about um, all that sort of stuff. And so that was um, a nice sort of like intro into it. We were still jet lagged, we were still tired, we were still like, what's going on with this place? I'm not used to it. Um, and then we started with our um, lectures that we got. We had, I think we had a total of 10 lectures from professors and experts in the field. I think that was something that was really beneficial was that we had professors um, lecturing on race, gender, all that sort of stuff, and they were experts in the field and they had years and years of experience. And so they were able to sort of break it down for us and um, give us a, a Mexican perspective on the country, um, which I think was really, really beneficial. And something that um, I haven't really uh, had the opportunity to do before, um, which was really great. We got to go out into the real world and we got to like learn on the street. We got lectures, you know, at the bottom of like a cathedral. We got lectures on, you know, like all these different spaces. We had one professor, she brought us Mexican candy and we sat like under a tree and she introduced us to um, all of the different uh, like candies that she had. She was uh, an anthropology um, an archeology span uh, professor, um, doctor, and she was able to sort of tell us the backstory of this candy and like where it came from and how it came to be, which is super cool. Um, and then we also got real world, ex real world experience from social work professionals in hospitals, in refugee houses, in um, schools, all that sort of stuff. So it was definitely, we had lots of tiers of learning that we were able to do, which was maybe a little bit more like quote unquote traditional in a lecture hall but then we also got to go out and like be surrounded by Mexico and then learn about it as well. And so my classroom environment uh, was um, far more traditional in the sense that you know we went to our lectures uh, we you know had our assignments 
we actually were given a uh, attendance sheet. And so uh, what some students might uh, overlook is that the approach to education and the uh, rules uh, surrounding the classroom uh, differ from country to country. And so uh, because I had that more traditional uh academic environment um, where, you know, we were coming to class and, uh, you know, we were reporting to the professor consistently. I found that I had a very uh, great opportunity to connect with my professors in a way that maybe I didn't uh, uh, here at the University of Calgary, just due to classroom size, particularly. Um, you know, I, w I went from uh, classes of 100, 150 students to uh, 15, 20 students at the University of Seoul. And so uh, that allowed me to engage with the course material um, a little bit more uh, on a personal level. Now, one thing that I noticed was uh, it changed me as an academic, I would say, <laughs> just because uh, all around me were students that you know, uh, were so academically driven and it was less about experience and, you know, campus life and more about uh, the academic rigors of right. university life. And so suddenly I found myself uh, at uh, the library overnight, uh, you know, and suddenly, <laughs> willingly, yeah. yeah, and willingly <laughs> I was, you know, following suit with my, uh, with uh, the domestic students uh, that were around me. And, um, you know, it uh, definitely changed my study habits and uh, just the way I sort of took information in. Um, but the classroom environment was also, uh, aside from being, you know, quite rigorous, was also very supportive and flexible, uh, recognizing that, you know, I was coming from Canada uh, and that, you know, this was my first few months in South Korea. And so uh, just helping me understand, uh, you know, the perspective of, you know, where um, my instructors were coming from, where my fellow classmates were coming from and things like that was also quite beneficial. If we can go back in time a little bit to reflect on your initial thought process for study abroad and then how that application process worked and how the study abroad office got both of you set up for your experience and then additionally what that looked like while you were on the road in terms of connecting back with the office if you guys needed assistance or whatever that looked like for both of you. So we'll start with you, Caitlin. Just mm -hmm. take me back to when you were first applying and go through the whole process with me. The application process for me was really straightforward, really easy. Um, I was able to go to my arts advisor and then also go to a social work advisor um, and just make sure that the program fit into my degree, um, which it did perfectly. It lined up absolutely with my um, degree. It also lines up with my um, interests. So that was super easy. Once I got the sort of advising part over with it, um, then I just applied online. It was really straightforward. Oh, and then I also, um, um, they did like a, an info session um, because it was a social work program we had students from all across Alberta who were doing virtual learning circles or learning in class um, and so we had a, an online um, info session and we were able to ask all of our questions to the professor who was running the program we got to ask her um, you know what would the coursework look like you know all that sort of stuff um, after I applied I was accepted pretty quickly which was awesome there wasn't a lot of like anxiety about that and then after I got accepted um, then we just had some correspondence about um, sort of logistics making sure that uh, your insurance is all good booking flights that sort of stuff the process was relatively easy um, especially considering that we did have students all across Alberta so it was a lot of email communication a lot of correspondence not in person um, and then we had our travel clinic we were able to get all set up with our vaccines that we would need to go away um, and then we had an in-person uh, orientation session which was really awesome we were able to um, ask any questions that we needed to write up front. Um, we were able to sort of meet everybody firsthand so we could like talk to all these people who would be, had been emailing with back and forth for a couple months. Um, and then we also did um, orientation session online through D2L, which was super helpful right. because I'd traveled before, but I'd never um, 
really thought about some of the things and I'm like, oh, maybe I should have. Like, it's it was really good to um, be prepared. Even, like, taking a first aid kit. Like, I never really thought about that before, but I actually used my first aid kit while I was studying abroad, so that was pretty great. Um, even just, like, a packing list because it's so daunting to be like, what do I need for a month? And then you need to, like, bring everything with you just in case. Um but yeah, so it was really great. Um, I had a super awesome experience with, with the study abroad office, for sure. Awesome. And you, Rahul? So the study abroad office uh, was supportive from, you know, start to finish. My advisor uh, really helped me understand the sort of commitment that I was making in studying abroad, uh, as well as really communicating that it's not just, you know, uh, a vacation for a semester. Uh, really talking about... Uh, talking about making sure that my motivations for going abroad, uh, as well as some of the impact that uh, will inevitably happen throughout the experience that I'm prepared for it. Uh, and so logistically, of course, the advisors are there to help you with your application process and, you know, your visas and things like that. But then, you know, it's also good to note that our advisors are region experts. You know, they really know the countries and the partners that uh, they're dealing with. Um, so much so that they can provide, you know, first name, last name of their counterpart at the host institution at the drop of a hat. You know, um, they really are... Um, very supportive in uh, getting students to really explore the regions that they uh, are going to, but as well uh, are very knowledgeable uh, every step of the way, whether it be, you know, the type of visas that you need uh, based on your circumstances or, you know, um, how to register for housing, whatever it might be. There was a lot of support. Um, but then also, you know, the university, while you're while you're abroad. Uh, there are a number of supports still available to you. So of course your host institution uh, is that sort of front line, but of course, you know, as things happen that are sometimes out of your control, there's an entire network here in Calgary that's working to ensure that your uh, experience is safe and positive. And so, uh, you know, just knowing that there was that sort of safety net back here um, really helped me feel confident moving uh, forward in in all the different programs that I had done. And so last question for both of you guys here. So if there's a student who's thinking about study abroad and they're kind of unsure, they're on the fence on what to do, what advice would you give them to consider it or ultimately push them over the edge and take the plunge? So we'll start with you, Arul. Sure. Um, you know, if you're on the fence uh, about studying abroad, I will say that, um, you know, speaking to my fellow uh, alumni of the institution, uh, speaking to people who both studied abroad and didn't study abroad, one uh, for one of the biggest regrets that students had that didn't study abroad is that they, you know, didn't uh, look into it further. You know, they didn't uh, do that little bit of research that could have potentially changed their lives, changed their degree paths. You know, uh, I would say be open to the possibilities, be open to uh, the idea that. Um, you know, what you thought you were going to be at 18 might not be what you are at 27, you know, uh, and that there's always positive opportunities no matter where you go. It's really about the uh, time and effort and commitment that you put into it uh, that really translates into positive things down the road. Uh, but I would say that, you know, talk to an advisor, uh, look at the feasibility feasibility of going on a program uh, because you'll be surprised at how many um, supports there are along the way with funding, for example, advising, uh, academic supports uh, that can help really make uh, your international experience a feasible one, one that fits into your degree. Um, a lot of students are worried about uh, graduating on time and things like that, or not being able to afford a program. Uh, and there's options for everyone. When uh, you look at our website, there are uh, 
a number of great partners, both on a budget uh, that fit your degree path, that fit your timeline. Uh, so I would say that there's really no excuse uh, to, <laughs> to not study abroad. I think that we, as an institution, make it very easy. The faculties are very supportive of it. And I don't think that there's a professor on campus that wouldn't say that it's a positive experience academically and personally, and for me, also professionally. So. And you, Caitlin? Um, yeah, I would say just do it. Like, really, that's how I. That's how. That's how my experience was. I just was like, yes, I'll do it. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care where I go. I'll just do it. Um, but I'll echo a lot of what Raul said. Um, there's so many different opportunities. Um, there's so many different um, areas that you can work in. If you don't want to go by yourself for a semester, you can go on a group study and be gone for a couple weeks and get credit. Like, that's wild. Get I got two course credits out of the way, um, which is actually speeding up my degree now. Um, course, you, can, you can go on a summer school and be gone for a couple months, or you can be gone for a whole semester or a whole year or many years. <laughs> there's so many different opportunities. And I was surprised at how many funding opportunities there were um going into it i was like you know what if i take this like a little bit of financial strain it'll be fine it'll be worth it in the end but actually look, looking through the price and looking through the cost of my trip it was very reasonable considering what i was getting out of it i was paying u calgary tuition for my two courses so i would have paid that anyways um and then just a little bit extra for traveling which is awesome but i got a lot of my trip uh, funded through different opportunities that the study abroad office was able to connect me with um, and they were super easy to apply for and they were super easy to get um, so yeah like there's there's definitely a lot of if, if you have a hesitancy chances are there is something out there that will mitigate that um, that barrier there's an answer to your question there's funding available there's all that sort of stuff so yeah definitely do it check it out go on the study abroad website go talk to an advisor, talk to somebody who has studied abroad before and just, you know, see if it's right for you. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. So cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast today and be sure to stay tuned for any upcoming episodes. As always, if there's an area that you would like to be covered on this podcast, let me know. My email can be found in the description below. The Study Abroad's website, 101 video, Instagram page, and blog can also be found in the description. So be sure to follow those channels to stay up to date with anything related to Study Abroad here at the UFC. If you want to connect with Study Abroad directly, they can be reached over the phone at 403-220-7702 or by email at uci at ucalgary.ca. Today's music was performed and arranged by Alvin Fenner. Thank you, Alvin, also known as Neat Beats. My name is Max Sterley, and I'll see you next time 